Duke and Carolina fans are all set. So are we. 23,000 plus on hand as we're set to crown the 39th ACC tournament champion. Here's the series history. This is the 188th meeting between these two clubs and North Carolina with a one game advantage in ACC tournament play. A couple of seniors will be key today. Leitner and Davis. And Leitner and Mondras Tippett. Duke will have the first chance. Bobby Hurley has been brilliant so far in this tournament. 13 assists. Matched it. ACC tournament high. That was in the opener against Maryland the other night. Thomas Hill. North Carolina in a man-to-man, Brad. Thomas Hill finding the range. You know, Duke's got five guys who can score. Duke in the man-to-man is Lynch. Kicks outside to Phelps. Duke really does a great job keeping pressure on the basketball, denying the guy with the ball a good look at the passing lane. Lynch works the baseline. Nice job by George Lynch. He's had a great tournament thus far. 41 points in the two games. Leitner's first touch and he threw it away. Antonio Lang has gone up to court telling Leitner to shoot it. Lang had great rebounding position. He was all alone under the basket. That's what Leitner saw. Lang, however, had his eyes elsewhere. South Carolina with a chance to tie. Montross. Wheels on Leitner, and Leitner stripped the ball. Three on two, Duke. Thomas Hill walked with it. Couple of turnovers. North Carolina did a tremendous job yesterday getting back and defending the transition play, and they're starting out very well here today. Reese the miss, Brian Davis the rebound. Bobby Hurley pulls up. Just inside the three-point line, he buries the jumper. Hurley with four. Gotta be ready to play right away when Duke gets the ball down the court. Davis is doing a tremendous job keeping the ball out of the hands of Hubert Davis. And with North Carolina's lineup, don't look. Here, here you go. There's Hurley diving after the basketball. Phelps is the last guy to touch it. And don't you think Duke is excited about this game? That's the Mike Krzyzewski scowl right there. Transferred over to his point guard. I think he has to practice that. It comes naturally. Hurley again. Jumper got another one. We talked about the versatility of Duke. Leitner hasn't scored yet. Great pass inside, and Brian Reese hammers it home. Reese with a chance to cut the three-point play. A good comeback is always important, but his coach would prefer that he stop the dunk. 8-5, Duke. Thomas Hill. yesterday and already he has five to lead Carolina. Hill outside. Thomas Hill's jumper won't go, but Leitner keeps it alive. Hurley, three-pointer. Montross up strong for the Tar Heel. Lynch. Oh, he's been something inside. 
talk so much about Duke's transition game, you forget that North Carolina has one of the best transition games around, and they burned Duke that time, and now they drop back into a zone. Tar Heel fans come to life as their clubs back to within one. Blake will throw it away again. Hubert Davis got a hand in there. Run though was Brian Reese with those two aggressive moves to the basket. Leitner will try again outside. And that's a three. He's hit 20 of his last 30 three pointer. really fun to watch. Brian Davis is working as hard as you can. Defensively, Hurley tosses that one away against Hubert Davis. But Davis is just doing such a great job on offense, he's getting open anyway. 15-0-3 to go first half. The Tar Heels by one. Both teams have started hot from the field. That's pretty hot. Carolina with only one miss. They bring it up with a one-point lead. North Carolina has got excellent shots, Brad. And that's really something against the Duke defense. Leitner knocked it away. Turnover North Carolina. Grant Hill into the lineup for Duke. Bobby Hurley alone. That one rattled out. Battle for the rebound won by Phelps in the outlet to Davis. He'll take it up himself. Boy, if he starts hot, look out. It's an awfully tough shot on a dead run with somebody in your face. North Carolina in the zone. Grant Hill. Just bring off an All-American off your bench. It's okay. Duke has five guys averaging in double figures. Grant Hill, of course, is one of them. 16-15, Tar Heels. Rodel in the lineup for Carolina. There's Montrose. Good position in low and a nice feed by Phelps. Perfect pass. Nobody was back there for help, and you throw the ball just a little bit higher to Montrose, and nobody can get it. making Duke play against the set defense and forcing Duke into the perimeter shot. Sullivan, Rodel, Davis, Phelps, and Montross for North Carolina. Ryan Davis on Hubert Davis. North Carolina being very patient on the offense over. Davis is three for three. He missed that one. Oh, he's get called for an offensive foul, pushing off with the arm in the drive to the basket against Antonio Lang. Matt Winstrom checks in for Carolina. You can't take out your opponent's rib on the way to the hoop, though. That's Generally not. <laughs> not if the official sees starting in this championship final. North Carolina showed the trap that time, Brad, for the first time, and Duke turned it over. And by the way, much like these teams, these officials earned their way to the championship game, too. Winston oh. looking to kick it back outside. The trap too late. Excellent job by Duke cutting off the passing lines. Couldn't even see light through there. Lynch on Leitner. Lynch is right in his face. Bobby Hurley, three-pointer. Rebound, Rodel. Clears it out, Lynch all alone. Hurley went for the 
steal, and if you're going to go for it, you better get it. And he didn't. Lynch with six. North Carolina's lead again is three. North Carolina back to the zone. Leitner. A great cut. Great cut to the basket. He can make George Lynch work a little harder for his baskets than that. Eric Montross back in for North Carolina. Joining Derek Phelps, George Lynch, Brian Reese, and Henrik Rodel. Discussion going on among the officials. Well, the discussion is going on as to whether it was a shot or a pass. It's clearly a pass. And that's what the official calls. So Christian Leitner will not be shooting two free throws. Duke will have the ball out of bounds. We'll look at it when we come back. 11.37 to go, first half. Carolina by three. Back after this from Budweiser. Everybody's dressed in blue. Varying shades, however. Carolina Duke for the ACC championship. Let's take a look at that last play, Dan Bonner. Christian Leitner going to the free throw line may have been an editorial comment about what he should have done as opposed to what he did. He passed the ball clearly. Now at the next level that he'll proceed to next year when you hear that whistle he better get that ball up on the board and get those two shots How about 90 percent from the field for North Carolina 57 normally is going to get you a lead <laughs> Devils are down by three Parks nice inbound pass but he missed him close and now he's going to get the foul going over the back of George Lynch easy opportunities and they are converting them. I can only I can only think of one tough shot that Hubert Davis made. Otherwise, they've had dunks and wide open opportunities. Leitner picks up Rodel, who drove past him in parts. Set it out into row one. George Lynch crosses it to Reese. Duke, you don't want to let it get 
Built too high. Five-point lead is the highest of the day for the Tar Heels. 26-21. Again, Roto is going to get called for a kick, and the clock's going to reset to 45, but that's another excellent example, a rather lazy pass by Brian Davis. And North Carolina is in the passing lanes. I think Brian Davis has to find a way to get involved offensively for Duke. He's scoreless, and he had 17 points in each of the two games to get here. That's the guy they got to get involved in the offense for. Up to that point, Brad had only hit one of six from three point range. North Carolina had done a pretty good job forcing them outside. Hurley leads Duke with nine. 26 24. Tar Heels. And Phelps just dribbled it off his foot. And that's the seventh turnover against North Carolina. Zone once again for North Carolina. They've been switching up fairly frequently. We approach the eight minute mark left first half. Leitner's tray. That one comes off Lang. A strong rebound. Got it again and score. Boy, what great work inside. Here comes North Carolina back. 26 26 time. Sullivan breaks the tie in a hurry. North Carolina continues to get layup after layup. Antonio Lang, an illegal screen. First foul against Lang. And with seven minutes, 41 seconds left first half, we've got a timeout and a great one going. North Carolina leads Duke by two. So much in there in orange, look like a pumpkin pie underneath <laughs> for Carolina. 28-26. We have had but one tie, and that was one basket ago, 26 apiece. Brad, and the amazing thing about the Tar Heels is they're not getting the shots halfway up the lane. They're getting them right on top of the basket. Lynch gets fouled by Lang. That's a couple of fouls now against Lang. He just got called for the offensive foul down on the other end, so within the space of about 15 seconds, he gets two. And you voted for the Dream Team, and now you can get the video. Stay tuned at halftime for details on how to order the True Value ACC Dream Team home video. Somewhere down the line, when we have a Dream Team, some of these young men will be on it, no doubt. Steal by Laker. Just took it right away from Montross. Red Hill almost ran out of baseline, got it back to Laker. Two for three out there today. Tremendous job by Hill. What a mismatch inside, but he gets it and takes it away with the jump ball call. String hanging out of his jersey and everything. Montross missed, got it back, and didn't miss that time. 31-30 Duke with 6.20 to play first half. Brian Davis sets up, buries it outside, just inside the three-point line. Davis has a 
string trailing from his uniform, too. You know, Duke does such a successful program that maybe they get uniform and stick together. Swiss! George Lynch drives on Lane, lost the handle, but Phelps picked it up. He's trapped in there. Nice job to get it out. Hubert Davis started off hot, and he has not even touched it almost for Carolina lately.
the shot clock. Now we're under 10. And Bobby Hurley's going to reset it. There's the shot clock in the corner. And clear out. Hurley does it himself, but comes up short. And a charging ball. Considered by Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. With Dan Bonner, I'm Brad Nussler in this ACC championship game at the Charlotte Coliseum where the Blue Devils of Duke lead the North Carolina Tar Heels 39-32 and we approach the two-minute mark first half. Ball loose. George Lynch lost the handle. Brad, North Carolina's got to get back somehow to get production from the inside. They're getting the ball inside, but Duke is slapping it away. The help is coming and preventing extra passes from being made inside. Once North Carolina gets it in there, they can't do anything with it. And that's a real turnaround from early in the game. That was Carolina's 12th turnover of the first half. Grant Hill. Curley drives again. And again misses. Lynch got the rebound somehow. He tipped it, didn't get it to go, and then still was able to get up and pull it down. Hubert Davis with a left hand. When you need one badly, you got to figure that's the guy who's going to get it for you. Nine for Davis. Duke's lead cut to five. Minute 15 left in the half. Grant Hill is asking for a lob. That's a bold move. Montross is standing next to the basket. Thomas Hill. Oh, wow. Got it back and still can't get it to go. And Duke will have another try and a fresh 45 with under a minute to play. Trying to cut into a five-point Duke lead. Leitner has it knocked away. The last touch by George Lynch. with a seven-foot guy in the neighborhood for the other team. 41-34. There's about a seven-second difference between shot clock and game clock. That's pretty good. Will you get a tenth of a second and you can do that? <laughs> Let's see if Hubert Davis gets his hands on it for the final shot. But he's got Brian Davis playing him defensively, and that won't be easy. There he was, but Rodel couldn't get it to him. Three-point shooter. Rodel is a 54% free throw shooter. You would almost rather have Davis taking the trade than Rodel at the line. But Henry made us all in the center. That's his first point. Seven seconds left, able to stretch the lead out to eight points at intermission. Duke Blue Devils trying for a little payback from last year. They've got the lead at halftime, 44-36. We'll be back with our halftime activities after this from Bud Light. Leitner hitting the 13 mark with that three-pointer with about six and a half seconds left in the first half. Burley and Hill behind him. Davis with nine, Lynch eight, Brian Reese with seven. Christian Leitner. Brian Davis have never won an ACC tournament title, even though they wear a national championship ring. They're 20 minutes away from maybe the final piece to the puzzle in their college basketball careers, and here we go. Duke stays in the man-to-man -man defense. North Carolina has switched it up throughout the game. Backdoor Lynch got free and put it in. Boy, what an incredible shot by Phelps. Phelps, excuse me, yeah. 
take what sometimes what the opposition is going to give you. Duke gave that back door and North Carolina took it. Oh. Really tried to lob the Leitner and Leitner got pushed by Lynch underneath. Third foul on George Lynch. Things are going pretty well for the Duke Blue Devils at the moment. That ball almost went in the basket and it was supposed to be a lob <laughs> pass. Not much arc on it, but he kept close. Antonio Lang thought about taking the jumper outside, drops it off to Thomas Hill. Lynch matched up against Leitner inside. Lynch with those three fouls. Ryan Davis, three pointer. <laughs> and he quick glanced over his shoulder to see if the official had both those arms in the air as he was running up the court. 47 38 to a nine point lead. Hubert Davis. He buries a three. That's a pretty good answer. Cuts it right back to a Duke six point advantage. didn't come far enough, Brad. He cheated up there, and I think he felt like he had given Phelps sufficient room to get through, but Phelps didn't come, and Hurley went right to the basket. 49, 41, Duke. Hubert Davis. That's a tough shot. He got fouled by Thomas Hill. Hubert Davis. the first player since Johnny Dawkins and Lenny Bias back in 86 to have 20 points plus per game and 50 percent or more from the field and 80 percent plus from the line. He has 13 points and the Duke lead is seven. Late here. That's just an unbelievable win. I mean are you kidding me? Center, you have to have the luxury to stand back in the lane and wait for the guy to come to you. That's a, that's unfair. He doesn't come that far. He has four threes today. Montross oh, yeah. didn't look for it. Lynch tried to get it to him underneath on the day. Ryan Reese got around Bobby Hurley. Maybe should have taken the shot. Tried to get it inside. But instead, it's a turnover. And now Hurley pulls up. That would have been a killer had that gone. Phelps outlet to Davis. Three on two for Carolina. Davis has it rejected by Leitner. Hubert Davis pulls up and has it go. Brad Duke shot one of their first seven three pointers. They've hit five of their last seven.
inside trying to battle for position on the rebound. Huber Davis, Davis gets the foul. 15-32 to play. The Duke Blue Devils out in front, 56-47. We'll be back after this from Budweiser. Be sure, be sure to stay tuned for the Nations Bank Players of the Game Award. Nations Bank will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. That's the Nations Bank Players of the Game to be awarded near the end of our broadcast. Brad, a three point miss by Leitner and then as you said the little guy is where he should be. Yeah that's something that hasn't too uh, happened too often Leitner missed but there's Hurley with the offensive rebound and the perfect pass inside so your center shoots from three your point guard gets the rebound Hurley now with seven assists in the basketball game Leitner has seven steals. Duke doing a heck of a job of converting. You see, the rebounds are pretty close, but if you can get all the rebounds you want, if you don't convert them, it's a meaningless stat. And Duke with a big advantage there. And a nine point advantage here on the scoreboard. Leitner inside. What a pass by Graham Hill. Leitner has 18 points. And North Carolina's got to be looking for a run here. Still a lot of time left, but. You do need to make a run or a couple of them against a team like two. You're right, Brad. You're not going to get it all back at one time. Montross kicks it out to Rodel. This lineup in the basketball game, you better be getting the ball inside and converting inside. Duke sort of cut the inside off for North Carolina so far here in the first five minutes of the half. With eight seconds on the shot clock. Bobby Hurley commits a foul. It's a new tournament record for Bobby Hurley. As Dan mentioned, with seven assists, puts him over the mark. And that breaks the record of Jimmy Black between 1979 and 82 during the course of the ACC tournament. Davis works against Brian Davis. Play underneath. You can hear bones cracking way over here. Well, the one thing that you could hear clearly was people yelling inside, and every time you jump up for a rebound, you have to go, oh, oh, so just in case you can get a foul call. That time, Salvadori clearly over the back of Leighton. So Duke by 11. A chance to stretch the lead to its largest margin if they score this time down. North Carolina goes back to the zone. Grant Hill. Leitner outside. Hill works the baseline and it's double team there. 15 on the shot clock. Grant Hill buries it on the baseline. Straight ball movement against the zone. It's a 13 point blue down the lead. For Salvador. Penetrated the Duke defense that time. Nice job by Phelps. He drew the defense. Salvador cut to the open spot. Salvador's first basket. On the baseline, Thomas Hill. Gets it down 15 on the shot clock. Christian Leitner, he's got another one. Five threes on the day for Leitner. They're not trying to use the clock necessarily, Brad. They're just very patiently attacking the zone defense, getting wide open shots, taking what the defense gives them, and impressively converting. Hubert Davis had it stripped away. Montross picked up the loose ball. It's Leitner again slapping that thing away. And he blocked that. Grant Hill won it. Got it. Sends it to Hurley. Back to Hill. Might need a timeout here, North Carolina. Dean Smith calls timeout with 12.40 to go. And the Devils of Duke are running away with it right now.
Christian Leitner is five of eight from three point land in this ballgame. And he's doing other things, Brad, besides shooting the three. Here's Christian Leitner with the three point shot. On the other end of the court, here's Christian Leitner with the blocked shot. Christian Leitner having a big, big basketball game. This is just a great job by Grant Hill. Rodel in perfect position to take the charge, but Hill stops. Hill seven of seven from the field, and Christian Leitner, along with his teammates, really enjoying it. His uniform's coming apart, too. We're going to have to investigate this. Leitner's hit 24 of his last 37 three pointers. This is a guy that is 6'11. <laughs> That's crazy. Lynch. They needed that. You've got to start working yourself back in the basketball game here. You've got to start it on the defensive end of the court. Duke's just been able to do anything they wanted to. You've got to get them out of their rhythm. North Carolina changes to the man to man in an attempt to do that. Hold on, Sarge. Thomas Hill over Hubert Davis. Okay, so much for that strategic move. Eight three pointer of the game. Phelps drives all the way in. But you can't keep giving threes for twos, or you're going to lose ground consistently. With 11.45 to play, it's Duke 68, North Carolina 53. Somehow oh. got it back and missed in Leitner, the rebound. Duke has only missed one shot in the second half. I'm sure North Carolina's partisans would believe that statistic, 11 of 12. Now the Tar Heels started the game 9 of 10. The difference being that Duke with this hot streak in the second half has really pulled away. Duke was able to hang with the Tar Heels in the first half, but the Tar Heels were making everything. Early threw it away. Lynch in the right spot. He'll run it down. And George Lynch with 12. That was a mistake by Bobby Hurley. Took it to the inside and suddenly found himself surrounded. Duke hasn't made too many of those mistakes, particularly in the second half. Lightner strong and fouled by Salvador. Be sure to stay tuned for the Players of the Game Award brought to you by Nations Bank. And the guy that's going to go to the free throw line for Duke certainly has to be a strong candidate. Montross in, Salvadori out. Wagner had a 33 point evening against Maryland. And he only had 15 yesterday. Only 15. <laughs> Syracuse over Georgetown. Big East title. 22 points for Christian Leitner. Mike Krzyzewski said yesterday that he thought Leitner played as good an all-round game as maybe Leitner has ever played at Duke, which is a heck of a statement to make. And that'd be hard to top the game he's had today so far. 23 for Leitner. 72-55. We're almost at the midway point of the second half. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you in Charlotte for the ACC Tournament Championship, Duke and North Carolina. Davis. Tough shot. 17 for Hubert Davis. Brad, and he's had to work for just about every one of those 17. Duke doing a tremendous job finding him and defending him. Now here's some trapping pressure. Antonio Langs, the free man, misses the shot. Got a young Gordon score. North Carolina got what they wanted, Brad. The trapping pressure 
gets the ball into the hands of Lang and he misses the shot, but then he gets his own rebound and not only does he score, but he gets fouled. Here the ball comes right back to him. Sometimes out of the trap, it's tough to block out, but then he gets fouled and Duke just feels it right at the moment. You just get the idea that they're, they're gonna move in for the kill. Lang in the late stages of this Duke season has really come on to be yet another force that the rest of college basketball has to try to deal with. 75-57. Hubert Davis. He's a two-pointer. He's got some awfully broad shoulders. You don't see it when you just look at him, Brad, but he's been carrying this North Carolina team. Up strong, not cross the rebound. He barely never tipped that ball in. Duke certainly doesn't need that kind of help. And Thomas Hill almost swiped it. Let's see. Still a loose ball, and Hurley's got it. And it's left by Montross, but the foul by Thomas Hill. Again, it's an 18 point Duke lead. Montross in close. Lakers just let him have it. Very few times in this half, Brad, has North Carolina been able to get the ball inside to their big guys. Two, three. Montross's first bucket of the half. Sal has got one. George Lynch only has two. It's a tough job for Montross. Tough coming out trying to guard Layton out there. Shot clock. And under eight minutes on the game clock. Phelps goes down. Hurley with a jumper. Oh. Leitner got the rebound and he got fouled as well. Hurley's laying on his backside over here by our table asking for a foul. Duke's got it going their way, 77-61. We'll be back after this from our good friends at Budweiser. 77-61, Duke with 7.43 to go. Let's take a look at our four keys to the game. Christian Leitner with just a heck of a basketball game and five for eight from three-point range. Duke shooting it very, very well. The story for North Carolina, you can see they got it inside effectively in the first half. In the second half, Duke has totally shut that down. Hubert Davis with 19 is keeping the Tar Heels within hailing distance. I don't think the Tar Heels can worry about points in the paint anymore. They better get outside that three-point arc pretty soon. 7.43, all that's left. Unless they can pick up some three-point plays in the paint, it won't be enough to catch Duke. We've got Williams in the basketball game. His reputation is as a three-point shooter. I think you can expect some trapping by Carolina. Here you see it. They're going to try to create some turnovers and look for them to launch the three down on the other end. Duke, of course, can afford to be very patient. You don't want to be too patient, though, Brad, and get passive. Duke has been playing very, very well, and you don't want to lose that edge on the offensive end. Williams on Hurley. 15 on the shot clock. Hurley does a great job of looking for the official and seeing what stage he's at at the count. Five on the shot clock. Oh boy. With one on the shot clock, they get a slam dunk. That's execution. Oh Lynch down to Brian Reese. Brian almost lost the handle and did. Antonio Lang carried it. He walked. He did carry it. Pulled it over, trying to find the handle. <laughs> you can afford to smile about that kind of an error when you're up 79 to 61. Six and a half minutes to play in this game. 79-61. Montross kicks it back out to Williams. There's the three, but he didn't get it. 
Lynch goes up inside. The ball goes inside to Montross. The defense collapses against him, and he pitches it out to Williams. He was just a tad short. North Carolina got to celebrate last year with an ACC tournament championship. Duke only 621 away from being able to counter with one of their own here today. North Carolina did such a tremendous job in their ball game yesterday against Florida State, taking away the strengths of the Seminoles, but they have not been able to do that against the Duke Blue Devils. Early in the first half, when North Carolina was shooting 90% from the field, Brad, they had a two-point lead. When they were playing very, very well, the game was close. And as Duke has shut off some of their options, the game has, the margin in the game has stretched further and further out. Problem is, Duke's got too many strengths, too many options. Particularly with the fact that Grant Hill's back in the lineup and playing as well as he has played today. And Antonio Lang, who got the opportunity to play more with the injuries that Duke suffered, also having a very good game. Duke again stretches things out. Leitner got by Salvador and puts it back on top to Grant Hill. And they're just going to try to do what they did the last time. It's like Hill had a little bit of a nosebleed. Yeah, he broke his nose last year, and he's got something in there now because he's had a bloody nose in this one. It's been a physical contest. Curley. Rebound Davis. And that's just as good as two points in that situation as you get a foul against George Lynch. And George has four. True Value Dream Team Home Video is coming soon to True Value Dealers near you, or you can order right now. Give a call, 1-800-854-4800. 1-800-854-4800. True Value Dream Team Home Video. Mike Krzyzewski had a dream team for Duke last year with a national crown, but they couldn't win the ACC title. This year, it looks like it's going to be a different story unless Carolina can pull off a miracle comeback here in the last five minutes and 40 seconds. Ten points now for Brian Davis. Sullivan comes in for North Carolina. George Lynch will go down with those four personal fouls and sit. Second one comes up. Sullivan clears it ahead to Phelps. 80-62. Pointer. Came out on him. Late with a rebound. That's his eighth board of the day to go with his 23 points. Of course, the strategy with launching the three point shots, Brad, assumes you're going to make some of them. Bobby Hurley couldn't handle it. Nice defense by Derek Phelps. Turnover Duke. As we saw in yesterday's Florida State North Carolina game the three point shot if you can create some turnovers and get that three point shot you can cut into a lead very very quickly so North Carolina not out of this game yet but they've got to get the threes to start going in the basket. Oh. Salvadori. The second basket of the half we're under five minutes Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner at the Charlotte Coliseum you can see it's Duke by 16. And North Carolina cannot afford to have Duke run 40 seconds off the clock, whether they score or not at this point in the game. North Carolina has to do something to create a turnover early in the possession. Leitner got position behind oh, Salvador. He blocked his first shot, fouled him on the second one. Leitner with great position. Reese comes over, takes a swat at it. But you see how well he established himself. Then when Salvador goes for the block, since Leitner took so much time to gather himself, he's able to be in good position for the rebound. And the Blue Devils starting to celebrate a little bit. You can understand why the fans starting to get up and leave. I think it's a little premature for that, but it's very nearly 
the end here for North Carolina. They they did not play bad. They have not played badly, Brad. They have just run into a steamroll. Remember the final last year for North Carolina, 96 to 74, as they blew out Duke. Keep your mind on that score as we approach 4:36 right now. You look up at the scoreboard, and this one has the makings of being a carbon copy in the other direction. All right, defense, one only, guys. One only. One shot only, says Lenny Wirtz. Christian Leitner will try to cap the three-point play. That one comes out. And George Lynch the rebound. Rodel, nice feed inside to Lynch. Timeout, North Carolina. Four minutes, 24 seconds left in this one. And the Blue Devils of Duke leading North Carolina 82-66. CC Tournament Championship. Mickey Shashevsky and her family looking on as her husband's club is about ready to win a big one here. And they'll go on to be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Those pairings will be announced later on tonight. Mike Shashevsky wanted to use this weekend not only to win the tournament, but to get some work for his team in their style of play. And I tell you what, if they need any more work than this, it's going to be a scary thought for the rest of the country. Lob, Grant Hill goes up, hits it, and puts it in. The only thing that spent more time above the rim in this game than Grant Hill is a 45-second shot clock. Sullivan. They needed that one, three-pointer. Yeah, but unfortunately, they had made the trade off for it. George Lynch just fouled out of the game. We've shown you a couple of replays that demonstrated the principle of verticality. George Lynch just demonstrated for Grant Hill the principle of horizontality. <laughs> Knocked him horizontal but got caught. And that's going to do it for George. George Lynch has had a pretty good tournament, though. You saw his numbers today, 15 points and five rebounds, 41 points in the two games prior to this one. George trying to get in position just knocks him down. So Brian Reese is going to come in as Lynch will have to sit down with 350 to play. And Dean Smith taking this opportunity to take his time to put Brian Reese in the game to have a little chat with Lenny Works. There's a young man that's going to be an awfully good one again next year as a senior at North Carolina. Every year he's gotten better. Great worth work ethic and plays bigger than he is. Tournament titles. Carolina's won a dozen. Then State, then Duke. Duke trying to add to that total. Grant Hill has 17 today. Very discouraged group of North Carolina Tar Heels. They, like the Duke Blue Devils, will be in action again next week in the NCAA tournament. 86-66. Sullivan, three-pointer, that one short. Reese threw it away. Three and a half minutes to go. And a foul on Derek Phelps. Actually, they... North Carolina Tar Heels did not get the foul as quickly as they wanted it. Duke moving the ball pretty well. So Hill will go to the free throw line. Duke with four of the top ten free throw shooters in the ACC. Leitner number three, Hurley number four, Davis number five, this guy Grant Hill number eight. That's what you want when it comes down to crunch time. Well, another thing that you'd like to have, and Duke has it today, is some balance. They've got six guys in double figures. Okay, we got one. 
can understand why Derek Phelps would be shaking his head over there. Brad Hill to try to make it number 20 on the day. And as you can see from that view, he's had an interesting day here. In 88-69. He has been harassed all day. Sure has. Finally got three for a jumper that went in and out. Yeah, Thomas yeah. down the rebound and he's fouled immediately. Sullivan. Duke doing a great job from the free throw line all season and all day. This is the last trip to the free throw line. Mike Shusevsky, he's he's not done yet. There's three minutes and two seconds left in this game, and that look does not appear to be a man who feels comfortable. Thomas Hill, one of the six Duke players in double figures. Hill. Brian Reese on the other end. And timeout, North Carolina. That's their final one of the day. Dean Smith, I think, just trying to stop the clock and letting everybody know. Let's go ahead and play. Maybe that's not what he's talking about. Yes, that's exactly what he's talking about. They'll go to the bench. Hey, Dick. And this That's gives us an opportunity with 255 to go in the ball game and Duke Cup 9071 for this message from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Duke fans starting to celebrate, waving goodbye to North Carolina with 255 to go and well in command. Bobby Hurley just passed Sidney Lowe. To number five on the career assist chart, 766, and some pretty impressive names: Kenny Smith, Muggsy Bogues, Grayson Marshall, and Chris Corciani. Still in his sights, and he's still got a year to play. Ten assists today for Hurley. After a 13 assist performance in the quarterfinal win over Maryland, he only had two assists yesterday, but he had 17 points. Seventy one, Duke. It's not really much left to North Carolina right at the moment, Brad. They don't really have enough time to come back in this basketball game. Duke hasn't shown the desire to turn the ball over, although Leitner does that time, trying to get the book pass around Montrose. That's the old Harvey pass. You throw up to Harvey, the rabbit. rabbit. That's right. <laughs> You're the only one who can see him. 19 point lead. Carolina can ill afford to take much time before putting one up. Even with two minutes and 13 seconds left in the game and up by 19, Duke still contesting the shots. Brian Davis. Chuck up another assist for Hurley. Sullivan backs outside the three-point line and put it in. 92-74. Last year's final, North Carolina 96, Duke 74. The tables have been turned here in 92. Of course, North Carolina would not mind that the turn of the tables, provided that they're able to get the national championship as Duke did last year. Bobby Hurley calls timeout. Unbelievable. The five seconds count is about to expire. Hurley standing right next to the official calls timeout. Pretty sharp. 137 on Duke has two timeouts remaining. They really don't need them at this point in command at 92 to 74. And it's obviously a very happy and relaxed Duke huddle right at the moment, but 
the point that I was trying to make last year Duke got blasted by North Carolina in this basketball game and came back to win the national championship. Let's meet our nation's bank players of the game Hubert Davis his final ACC tournament game a 19 point alley leading his club in scoring yet again and Christian Leitner who had 33 points and 16 rebounds against Maryland today with another big outing at 25 points to go with 10 rebounds. Our congratulations to those two and we wish them continued luck down the road and we'll know so of the NCAA basketball tournament everyone assumes they'll be the top seed in Greensboro. Subs in the basketball game. Bobby Hurley with the double double. Scott Terry now guarding Bobby Hurley. Gorgeous Smith went for in for North Carolina as well as Stevenson. Hearts back to Grand Hill. Hill goes between his legs, kicks it out to Hurley with five on the shot clock. Puts it up with one on the That's shot. Violation. Didn't hit the rim and hit the net. So and Bobby Hurley will check out. And he gets a standing ovation from the Duke fans. Grant Hill goes out. And they stay standing for him. And Duke just one minute away from the ACC tournament title. Six point five seconds left and a happy bunch on the Duke bench. Not so happy on the other side. Ron Burt, Duke's walk on coming in the basketball game. Dick Paparo signaled him in and I guess he plays so infrequently he didn't know he was allowed to come in so it took a couple of minutes to get that young man number five and white in the ball game. Second difference on the shot in game clock. Burke got his hands on it. He'll put it up. Ask comes around and buries it. <laughs> so much for clock management. The guys that come in at the end of the game aren't interested in that. Wenstrom. A little too strong. Blakeney the rebound. Show you how intense this rival is. North Carolina coaching staff is complaining that there was no call. <laughs> the ball game's over. Seven of the last 11 ACC tournament champions have advanced to the final four. Duke, of course, has been there a bunch of times, including taking it all last year. Who knows? Maybe they're on their way back. But here today, by the almost identical score they were beaten by a year ago, revenge will be sweet. And for Christian Leitner and Brian Davis, two seniors who said, we want to have fun, but we want an ACC tournament title, they've got it. <laughs>